In this video, we'll be going over the best teleportation abilities that are unique to classes or races. This video is about long distance teleportation abilities, since short distance teleportation abilities, like the Venthyr Door Shadows, were covered in another video. And also, nothing that's available to all classes, so no engineers with their wormholes or necrolords with their hearth's kidney stone. In at number 10, we have the warrior ability from Legion called Jump to Skyhold. This spell has a cast time of 4.3 seconds and is the only way warriors can get to and from their class order hall named Skyhold. This ability can only be cast when the player is in a circle of light and has the buff called Odin's Gaze. The flavor text for the spell reads, Jump into the sky, landing in the halls of valor. When a warrior is in a circle of light near Valkyrie of Odin with the buff on them, the warrior will get an extra action button which will instantly appear. Once in Skyhold, warriors can talk to a Valkyrie and choose which of the Broken Isle zones they want to go to. Upon clicking the destination zone, there is a neat visual upon descending, similar to the one players see when falling down into the Maw from Ouroboros in the Shadowlands. All of this means warriors essentially have a free teleportation to any zone the Broken Isles from their order hall, so as long as they have them all unlocked and are above level 12. The main downside to this system of teleportation is that there is only one location per zone where this ability can be performed, meaning the player must still travel to wherever the closest one is. In Dalaran, the Circle of Light is next to Lightforge Beacon, which is next to the Flightmaster in Dalaran. In Azuna, the Jump to Skyhold Circle of Light is near Azura Wing Repose. In Valshara, it's near Lorlithil. In High Mountain, it's near Thunder Totem. In Stormheim, it's near Valdasol. In Siramar, it's near Merodil. And the last one can be found in the Broken Shore. Each of these spots is unlocked only after the player arrives in the area or completes several quests in the zone. Jump to Skyhold's number 10 is a list of our handful of reasons. Technically, Jump to Skyhold is not a teleport, rather a jump, even though upon ascending the load screen is instantaneous. Additionally, Jump to Skyhold is only useful for traveling in the Broken Isles, and is not applicable to any other continent, world, or plane, which is a heavy drawback. And at number 9, we have the Scroll of Teleport Ravenhold. This item allows the player to teleport to Ravenhold Manor in Hillsbrad Foothills. This scroll has a 1 hour cooldown and is reusable an infinite number of times. While technically a Scroll of Teleport is not a racial or class ability, what makes the Scroll of Teleport Ravenhold unique and on this list is that it can only be used by rogues because it can only be found in the Rogue Order Hall, located in the Broken Isles in Dalaran, named the Hall of Shadows. The scroll can be picked up from the vault in the Hall of Shadows once the players have reached the Class Order Hall upgrade. The scroll was added to the game in patch 7.0 and is bind on pickup, meaning it cannot be sold in the auction house or traded. Therefore, only rogues are able to use this item since only rogues can go into the Rogue Order Hall, and since the scroll cannot be sold or traded to other players. The scroll is useful because it provides a fast way to get to Ravenhold Manor and the Ravenhold Faction. The main questline the Ravenhold faction offers is Rogue only. Ravenhold Manor is briefly visited in Legion by rogues while questing and is a quest location for the legendary set of daggers and cataclysm called the Fangs of the Father, also for a Wintervale daily. Rogues are also needed to get revered and exalted with the Ravenhold faction as only they can unlock and open the heavy junk boxes from the quest junk boxes needed. Getting exalted with Ravenhold is one of the criteria needed for the feat of strength in Sane in the Membrane, which awards the title the Insane. This is one of the most difficult and time-consuming rep grinds in the entire game. So, seeing as several aspects of Ravenhold Manor are rogue-specific, it makes sense why this teleport ability can be found in the Hall of Shadows. And at number 8, we have the Death Knight ability, Death Gate. This ability allows a DK to summon a portal to Acherus the Ebonhold, which is a floating necropolis in the Eastern Plaguelands. In Legion, Acherus moved along with Dalaran to the Broken Isles to help spearhead the assault against the Burning Legion. The spell itself takes 4 seconds to cast and spawns a very cool-looking portal. Additionally, Death Gate only has a 1 minute cooldown, which is a very short cooldown for what is essentially a flavored mage portal. When Death Gate is used in Acherus, it conveniently returns the player to wherever they previously were when they first cast it to get there. Death Gate is learned at level 10. The main use for the Death Gate is so the DK can visit a rune forge to inscribe their weapons with runes to enhance their combat capabilities. As of 9.2, there are 8 runes which provide different effects. Among these effects are runes to increase damage, runes to increase armor, restore HP, along with other various effects. The Acherus in Eastern Plaguelands is not a great transportation hub, so this teleport is more of a classic mechanic than a useful teleport for traveling around the world. However, the Acherus in Legion is a short flight from Dalaran, essentially making the Legion Deathgate a second Dalaran Hearthstone with a much shorter cooldown. From Dalaran, the faction hubs of Orgrimmar and Stormwind are one portal away, meaning the DKs essentially have two different base Hearthstones. And at number 7, we have the Shaman ability, Astral Recall. Astral Recall is learned at level 32, and its flavor tech reads, yanks you through the Twisty Nether back to your Hearthstone location. The Astral Recall ability is essentially another Hearthstone for Shamans, and it has three main benefits. The first benefit is that Astral Recall only has a 10 minute cooldown. It used to have a 15 minute cooldown, but that was changed in Legion. Secondly, Astral Recall doesn't share this cooldown with regular Hearthstones. 
meaning shamans can have two hearthstones. Finally, if a shaman is in the restoration or elemental specializations and has obtained the Spearwalker's Grace ability at level 44, they can use this ability to cast Astral Recall while moving. There are some drawbacks to Astral Recall, however. First, it is always set to your Hearthstone location, meaning both your Hearthstone and Astral Recall will always take you to the same innkeeper. Secondly, it has a long cast time of 10 seconds. However, Astral Recall benefits from the Haste stat, meaning you can reduce its cast time with more Haste stat from gear and other spells. However, Astral Recall does have two major downsides. First, it cannot be used while shapeshifted, which is a huge disappointment because the Ghost Will form is amazing for shamans with its mobility and speed. And biggest of all, it can't be used in combat, which means there's no mid-combat Astral Recall to avoid dying. There was once also a glyph called Glyph of Astral Fixation, added in Mr. Pandaria, that made your Astral Recall instead take you to Stormwind or Orgrimmar, allowing you to have your Astral Recall in a separate place from your Hearthstone. However, this was sadly removed in Legion. There's not much else to say about Astral Recall, other than that it's the only class teleportation ability specifically mentioned it as a second Hearthstone, since it puts a location to your current Hearthstone it's set in the tooltip for Astral Recall. All the other class teleportation abilities, such as the DK's Deathgate, always returns the player to the same location, regardless of wherever their Hearthstone may be set to. Thus, Shamans are the only class with two innate Hearthstones. And at number 6, we have the Warlock ability, Ritual of Summoning. This is one of the most common and fastest ways to transport players around the world in WoW. The flavor text for the spell reads, Begins a ritual to create a summoning portal, requiring the caster and two of the allies to complete. This portal can be used to summon party and raid members. Ritual of Summoning is used ubiquitously throughout the game, from raids to battlegrounds to the open world, and is one of the characteristic spells of the Warlock class. And while raids and dungeons have summoning stones that only need two people at the entrance to summon people, the Ritual of Summoning lets you summon people anywhere, even places without stones, including deep inside of a raid or dungeon, preventing you from having to run all the way back to the entrance, summon, and then run all the way back. It even works in Mythic Plus, in case you're in a dungeon with a horribly long run back, or the risk of someone running back and pulling extra mobs. The Ritual Summon ability has a cooldown of 2 minutes, although it stays active for about 3 minutes, meaning you won't really ever have to worry about waiting on the cooldown ever, and it's learned upon reaching level 33. The major drawback to the Ritual Summoning is that it requires two players and a Warlock to complete, meaning this teleport can only be done while in a group. Most long-distance teleportations is for single-player activities, such as running old raids or going to daily questing hubs or another continent. That's not to say people don't only do old content alone, but just that it is more often the case than not. Thus, this ability is quite useless if you're not in a group or raid, since it will not work, and therefore, it is of no help at all for a single player to teleport long distances. Because it requires the player to be in a willing and helpful group, Ritual Summoning is only the number 6 spot. And at number 5, we have the Monk class ability, Zen Pilgrimage. This ability allows monks to return to either the Peak of Serenity in the Kunline Summit, or the Monk Order Hall in the Wandering Isle. Zen Pilgrimage has a 1 minute cooldown, a 10 second cast time, and one very cool animation. If the monk has not done the intro Legion quests, they can always teleport to the Peak of Serenity in Pandaria. During the Monk Legion intro, the Peak of Serenity is heavily damaged and the monks decide to set up their operations on the Wandering Isle. Both the Peak of Serenity and the Temple of Five Dawns, the Monk Order Hall, have portals to various cities. In the Peak of Serenity, there's a portal to both Orgrimmar and Stormwind. This means a monk can simply cast Zen Pilgrimage, and then once in the Peak of Serenity, click on the portal to the respective faction hub. This is great for getting around the world from far away and remote places. In the Temple of Five Dawns, there's a portal to both the Peak of Serenity, which is located about halfway down the steps on the right side, as well as a portal to Legion Dalaran at the bottom of the steps. Legion Dalaran also has its own set of portals to Orgrimmar and Stormwind. Similar to the DK Deathgate, monks can cast the ability again from within their home temple to return to where they were originally cast Zen Pilgrimage from. This ability is unsurprisingly called Zen Pilgrimage Return. Zen Pilgrimage Return is an instant cast, which is nice not having to spend 10 seconds to cast it again. Interestingly, Zen Pilgrimage Return can be cast at level 1, but Zen Pilgrimage is not learned until level 11. And at number 4, we have the Druid ability, Dreamwalk. Druids have always been able to teleport to Moonglade, and in Legion, the Moonglade teleport ability was replaced with the Dreamwalk ability. Both Teleport Moonglade and Dreamwalk have a cast time of 10 seconds, like most teleportation abilities in the game. Teleport Moonglade is automatically learned at level 22 and is replaced by Dreamwalk when the Druid does the intro class order hall quest in Legion. The Dreamwalk ability allows Druids to teleport to the Emerald Dream where there are several portals to different places in Azeroth. In the Portal Ring, there are portals to several world trees across Azeroth, which makes Dreamwalk a very handy way of moving around the world. Among the locations offered by these portals include the Druid Order Hall called Dreamgrove in Valshara on the Broken Isles, Nordrasil in Mount Hyjal, the Great Tree in Feralis, the remains of Vordrasil in Grizzly Hills, the Great Tree in the Hinterlands, and the Great Tree in Duskwood. 
There is also another portal Moonglade, so you don't have to worry about Dreamwalk replacing the Teleport Moonglade ability. The Druid Order Hall has a portal to Dalaran, which is directly connected to the faction hubs of Stormwind and Orgrimmar, which means the Dreamwalk can also act as a second Dalaran Hearthstone. One significant drawback to Dreamwalk is that there's no portals to Pandaria, any BFA zones, any Outland or Wards of Draenor zones within the Emerald Dream. Additionally, many of these portal destinations are not really useful, since there's not much max level content to do around them, seeing as most of these great trees are in far, remote, and desolate corners of Azeroth. For example, although a druid can teleport to Feralis at any time they want, why would they want to? Dream Rock is such a cool concept, but it's a shame how little of an actual impact it has on gameplay. Blizzard should add more dreamwalking portals to the world, like maybe in the Zandalari Druid Temple, the Thorn Speakers in Kulturas, and maybe even one to Ardenwald. Just a bit of something to spice up each expansion and keep Dreamwalk relevant. And at number 3, we have the Volpera ability, Return to Camp. This ability is, for all intents and purposes, a second Hearthstone. Even better, unlike Astral Recall, this ability can set up the secondary Hearthstone location anywhere in WoW, so long as it is in the open world. Full player players need to cast the ability Make Camp to set the spawn point. Upon doing so, a cute little tent and campfire pops up from them, and the player receives a buff called Camping. Make Camp has a cast of 5 seconds and only a 10 minute cooldown. To return to the place where they cast Make Camp, Volpera players must use the ability called Return to Camp. Upon loading back to where they made the camp, a Volpera caravan pulled by llamas will drop off the player back to the little campfire and tent. Return to Camp has a 10 second cast time and a cooldown of 1 hour. The 1 hour cooldown is by far the greatest detriment to this ability. Even a regular Hearthstone only has a 30 minute cooldown, or a 15 minute cooldown if you're a guild with the hasty hearth perk. A secondary Hearthstone to wherever the player desires is a massive blessing, and Blizzard should seriously consider making something like this a baseline ability for all players. For example, the writer of this video uses his Hearthstone to get to the Shadowlands Covenant, and has the Volpiric Camp in Orgrimmar because he's too lazy to grind Anima for an alt for the Tier 3 portal network. The Garrison Hearthstone and Dalaran Hearthstone are useful, but where they teleport the player cannot be changed. WoW is almost 20 years old at this point, and having another Hearthstone ability to set anywhere, separate from the regular Hearthstone, would be a major convenience. Hopefully Return to Camp is the first iteration of something like this. And at number 2, we have the Mole Machine ability, which is a Dark Iron Dwarf racial ability. When the player uses this ability, it summons a mole machine that the players can click on and then choose the destination to go to. The Dark Iron Mole Machine has a cast time of 5 seconds, despawns after 3 minutes, and has a cooldown of 30 minutes. The player by default knows 3 locations, Ironforge, Stormwind, and the Shadowforge City. Throughout the world, there are also other mole machines that the player can click on and discover them, allowing the player to access any of these spots. There are mole machines in 17 zones, with usually 2 or 3 per continent. We'll briefly list them all, and here they are. Ares Peak in the Hinterlands, Blackrock Mountain, Netherguard Keep in the Blasted Lands, Ungoro Crater, the Southern Barrens, Mount Hyjal, Blade Edge Mountain, Shadowmoon Valley, the Argent Tournament Grounds in Icecrown, the Ruby Dragon Shrier in Dragonblight, Stormstout Brewery in the Valley of the Four Winds, Kunline Summit, Blackrock Foundry in Gorgron, the Elemental Plateau in the Alternate Draenor Nagran, Netherleon's Vault in High Mountain, and finally there's one in the Broken Shore. Perhaps Blizz will add more location options in the future, but this is already one of the best ways to get around the world easily and fast. Being able to go to so many places at the click of a button with only a 30 minute cooldown is an amazing utility teleportation ability and one of the most unique racial abilities that has ever been added to the game. And at number 1, we have the Mage Teleports. This is unsurprising since mages can not only teleport themselves to major cities and a handful of other places, but they can also form portals for any group members to use as well. Mage Teleport casts are 10 seconds long and usually require 3% of the player's mana. The Mage Teleport ability is learned automatically at level 21, but mages must visit portal trainers to learn teleportation destinations, which makes them one of the only classes in the game that can still learn things from their class trainers. Both Alliance and Horde mages can learn the following teleports, Dalaran Broken Isles, Dalaran Northrend, Hall of the Guardian, which is the Mage Legion Order Hall, and Oribos. While both factions can learn teleports to Shatrath City ability, each faction side is slightly different as it teleports a player to a different location in Chatrath. Specific teleportation destinations that are exclusive to Alliance Mages are Baradin Base Camp on Tolbarad, Boralis, Darnassus, Exodar, Ironforge, Stormshield, Stormwind, Theramore, and the Vale of Eternal Blossoms at the Shrine of Seven Stars. Specific teleportation destinations that are exclusive to the Horde Mages are Dazara Lore, Orgrimmar, Silvermoon, Stonard, which is a small encampment near the entrance of the Blasted Lands in the Southern Swamp of Sorrows, Thunderbluff, Hellscream's Grass, and Tolbarad, Undercity, the Veil of Eternal Blossom at the Shrine of Two Moons, and Warspear. Additionally, there is one more secret teleport that mages can learn called Ancient Teleport Dalaran. 
This teleport brings the mage into the middle of the air above the crater of Dalaran in Hillsbrad Foothills, where the city used to be before it teleported to Northrend and Wrath, and then the Broken Isles and Legion. This ability can only be learned from the ancient tome of teleportation, Dalaran. Teleporting to Dalaran's old location will put you quite a ways up in the sky, so make sure you don't teleport anyone to their death. I mean, it's not like anyone would ever do that intentionally. During Legion, there was also a portal in Dalaran to this location, located in the Chamber of the Guardian, with a sign in front of it reading, Warning, Drop. To get this item, a mage must go to the Scarlet Hall's dungeon, defeat Flameweaver Kolger without allowing him to burn any books with one of the fight mechanics, loot his corpse, and then the ancient Toma Teleportation doll around from one of the bookcases in the boss room. After this, mages can also buy the ancient Toma Portal doll around from Endora Moonhead and Northrend doll around. However, this item has a limited supply, so it might not always be available. Most mage portals can be learned at level 21 if the mage has talked to the correct portal trainer and has enough gold. The only exceptions to this rule are the ancient Teleport doll around ability, which requires level 28, and as of Shadowlands, the Teleport Orbo spell, which cannot be learned until level 52. The Mage Teleport ability is an iconic class ability, and one of the most useful abilities in the entirety of WoW, hands down, making this number one spot a no-brainer. Although, be careful, as it's common for mages to troll their allies by placing multiple portals stacked on top of each other, in-game, commonly known as the Portal Roulette. Maybe you end up in Nutter City, maybe the Shrine of the Two Moons, maybe War Spear, or maybe you fall to your death. And hey, as we end this video, if you want the best character ever for getting around the world, play a Dark Iron Dwarf Mage with Engineering, and you will never have any problems with getting around the many lands of Warcraft.